Okay, we've reached a point in the course now where you need to make a choice. So we're, uh, we finished collections and loops and basically all the basic programming content with some exceptions. We still need to learn functions and how to read and write to data files. However, right now we're, we need to install packages uh, in order to read and write to files to make it useful. In order to do that, I want you to consider whether you want to continue using Google Collab or whether you want to switch to the dominant platform Anaconda for writing Python code or managing packages. So let me give you some uh, positives and negatives of both. The plus side of sticking with Google Collab as we've used so far in the course is that it doesn't require any installation so it's very lightweight uh, on your laptop if you're using your laptop or whatever. It also um, has all the packages that we need for the course available on it already. We don't need to install packages. The downside, however, is that the process of reading and writing to CSV or other external data files is somewhat more complicated than if you're to use Anaconda. Now, it's not impossible, and I'll still have videos to show you how to do it in the next chapter. It's, it's, you can get used to it. Um, however, Anaconda is easier to use to read and write to external CSV files because you can read and write to uh, directly to your machine. However, Anaconda requires an installation. It also requires that you install the packages. Again, those things aren't impossible. I'll have a video to walk you through how to do both of those right now. Um, and so you just need to make a choice as to which one you want to do. Throughout the book, after this point, I may have a combination of both, um, Google Collab and uh, Anaconda environments. Um, once you've gotten the packages installed and, and the environment ready, uh, you'll be able to watch videos in either one and apply it to the platform you decide to choose. So, assuming you've decided to use Anaconda, let me show you how to do that. So let's search real quick for Ana Anaconda. All right, world's most popular data science platform, probably true. So uh, I'm going to accept the cookies here. I'm going to um, click on the download link. So download. We're going to use Python 3.7 version. Um, we're in, I'm on Mac. Uh, you could be on Windows. Just make sure you get the appropriate version, whether you want 64 or 32. Uh, you can do either one if you're on the 64-bit operating system. Um, so um, I'm going to do the 64-bit for, I'm, when I click on Mac OS, I'm going to do the 64-bit graphic installer. Now, I already have Anaconda installed. It's a fairly big download, 653 megabytes. Um, so it's like installing Microsoft Office or something like that. So I'm going to pause while that finishes. Okay, that's finished. Let's open up the package here. Now, I already have it installed, so this may give me some slightly different options. But it's pretty straightforward. We're simply going to install this with all of the, uh, um, all the defaults that it comes with here. It might take a moment to pop up because it might need to un... Um, uh, decompress. All right, here it is. This package will run a program. Yes, just hit continue when you see that. Continue, continue, continue. Uh, agree. Print for installation. Beautiful. All right, so while this is installing, let me explain what it'll do. So if you're already a programmer, which in this course you don't have to be, uh, but you ha understand what an IDE is, an integrated development environment. Anaconda, it's kind of like an underlying platform for IDEs. What it does is it allow it, Anaconda automatically installs Python or the Python compiler and everything needed uh, to run Python. Um, so you don't have to do that separately. But it also has a nice graphical platform for you to add any packages that you want to use. Python uh, anyone, it's open source, anyone can make a, a package for it. And we have some really popular data science ones that we'll want to download and install. But you can do that through Anaconda. And then from Anaconda, you can launch any number of actual IDEs for you to write code in. And all of them will draw from the packages and the Python installation that came with Anaconda. So it's a, a great way to make an open source environment with lots of independent packages. It's a great way to condense them or, or summarize them into one place. So uh, let's let this finish. If you get this message, hit OK. Not a problem. All right, mine says Anaconda 3 is already installed. 
Um, so mine's not going to finish right there, but just let yours uh, continue along. Okay, great little promotional material here. Mine failed because I've already installed it. Yours should be just fine. Yeah, it moves the trash. I'm good. Okay, when you're done and it's finished, let's go ahead and open Anaconda up. So it is this little green one right here. Bring this back up. Let that open. All right, let me fit this here in the window. So what we've got, uh, home environments. These are all the packages that we can install. As you can see, we've got package name here, description of the package, the version. Everything with a green check is already installed. We have a ton of stuff already in checked, already installed and available to us. So I'll walk you through which ones we need right now and how to install them. But before I do that, let's show you a bunch of, oh, look at this, incredible reference materials for Python. A uh, hundred times more than I could ever fit into this course. Uh, all throughout here if you ever need it. Great communities for uh, questions, ask each other. But back here on home, here's where we have different, these are actual IDEs. Uh, Jupyter Notebook's a very common one. Um, I like that one. It uses the IPy notebooks that we've been working with. Uh, Visual Studio Code's another one that uses a slightly different uh, environment, or a slightly different file, a .py file. Um, let's open up, well, before I open any, uh, let's proceed by installing the packages that we want. So back here in the chapter, I put a list of, oh, excuse me, I put a list of the ones that we want. It is here at the end. Uh, I put checkpoint here, but you're not actually going to submit an assignment here. I just want you to make sure that you have these five libraries installed. SciPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Scikit-learn, and Joblib. Joblib. All right, so uh, let's check for those one at a time. So back here in Anaconda, I'm going to go to Environments, and in, I'm going to change Installed to All, and then I'm just going to simply sit here and search Pandas. Oops, sorry, right here. Pandas. There we go. Got pandas already. That's the one we want. Data reader, uh, in case we need it. And SQL. Oh, this is a great one. We won't use these in this in this class, but uh, all of pandas is already installed, so we're good there. Let's go back and check again. Uh, SciPy. Let's check for that one. There we go. Got that one. Um, perfect. Let's go back and check. Uh, Matplotlib. You know, let's copy paste. Make life easy on ourselves. There, got that one already installed. Scikit-learn. Yep, right there, already installed. Joblib. There we go, already installed. So the latest version of Anaconda go ahead goes ahead and by default installs everything that we're going to need for this class. However, just know that stuff comes out all the time. And if you see something cool on YouTube or Stack Exchange or whatever that you want to replicate, you can likely come here, search the libraries, and it's going to be available for you to, to use. Some other common ones that we won't have time to get into in this class is the Keras package and uh, TensorFlow. It looks like it's already on there. While I'm in here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab these other TensorFlow libraries. I'm not going to use the R one, though. And uh, when you do install a package, you just come down here and hit Apply. And you just wait for it to sit here and run, and eventually it'll finish and tell you it's all been installed and good to go. Okay, eventually you'll get a note like maybe you'll get some of this. Here's some dependencies. If you install this package, you have to uninstall or unlink or link some of these other packages. Just hit apply. Not a problem. Let it continue down here. All right, all done. Box checked. That's how we install a package. So lastly, let's go back to home, and I want to walk you through using some of these. IDE. So let's use a Jupyter Notebook. So a Jupyter Notebook, it actually opens up, as you'll see here in a moment, um, this little command line interface is there for just a second. So it's running a program on my machine to connect it here with this it's simulating a, a server, basically. And although it, it, it opened up, oh, let me show you what I mean by that. Yeah, you couldn't see that. There we go. So uh, 
localhost means it's running a server instance here, virtualized server off my, well, running it off my own machine, not virtualized. But um, this, uh, it, it opened up this uh, web browser. So here's um, all of the uh, folders and locations available on my own machine. So what we want to do, let's go ahead and create, I'm going to move this back up. I want to show you how this works with the IPy files that we've been working on Google Collab. So right here, new Python 3. There we go. Untitled 2. Let's change this to uh, chapter 6. Eh, just chapter 6. So here's our line where we write code. Let's say um, uh, some string equals hello world print the string shift enter here we go do you see how fast that was it didn't do that little spinning thing like we get in google uh, collab let me show you exactly what i'm talking about here in google collab let's open up uh, i'll just make a new one new python 3 notebook okay let's call this Chapter 6, here, print, hello world, shift enter, see it spin right there for just a moment. The first time we run this, it's got to connect to our uh, um, back-end computing engine, and show, this shows us how much RAM and hard drive space or, or disk space is available on the servers we're using, because we're running here on Google Cloud, which is not running locally on our own machine. However... This Jupyter Notebook right here, it looks like it's running in the cloud because it opens in a browser, but it's not. Again, this local host means your machine. It means that this is running off your own machine, even though it looks like it's in a browser, which means it's likely going to be a lot quicker than anything that we run on Google Collab. So that is one more advantage of, of installing Anaconda and working through a Jupyter Notebook. So with this, we can... Um, Let's do download as, so you can see what you can do. You can save it in this IPy notebook file, which we've been using this class so far, or a .py, which is very similar, but it just doesn't uh, break up the code and then output into multiple segments like the IPy notebook does. Um, and that works just as well. You're, you're welcome to use uh, .py files. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's, let's talk about how to uh, import packages. So now we've got them installed and available. Uh, whether we're using here the Jupyter Notebook through Anaconda or Google Collab, we actually do it the same way. We just simply say import pandas as pd. So let's talk about this import. Uh, notice here in Anaconda or in Jupyter Notebooks, it bolds import and turns it green. That's a function of the environment that we're in. Remember in Google Collab when we do this, when you write a keyword, it turns it purple import pandas as pd. So import and as are in purple, just like print. Pandas is the name of a library, so it doesn't color that one. Um, however, it was, uh, libraries can have any name kind of like a variable can, even though we didn't create this library. Uh, anyway, that's why it's not colored. pd, like a variable name, this is, uh, actually it is a variable now, it's an object. So pd represents the availability of the pandas package or library and we can call it whatever we want we can import pandas as purple monkey dishwater and it'll work just the same but it's going to be a pain to reference purple monkey dishwater so usually we'll use something like pd so same in both environments right here let's call it good for this chapter then move on to the next on uh, importing or uh, reading and writing to data